The West Coast Fossil Park at Langebaanberg, along South Africa's Western Cape Coast, is situated on the site of an old open-cast phosphate mine. In about 1958, some interesting fossils were found in the mining works, which were shown to the South African Museum. This was the beginning of what would become one of the largest collections of fossils from one locality in the world. It appears that catastrophic floodwaters washed a variety of animals down the river, where they ended up in a pool scoured out by the river, which is now known as the Berg River. This resulted in a jumble of bones in one area, fossilized from creatures great and small. Researchers have also been able to identify fossilized pollens, indicating that five million years ago, this now arid region was covered in forests and riverine woodland, including tropical varieties such as palms. This was inhabited by now extinct animals, such as short-necked giraffes, called civetheas, elephants with four tusks, saber-toothed cats, three-toed horses, and the only African bear species ever known south of the Sahara. Changes in sea level added sea creatures to the mix. In 1994, the mine was closed and the entire mine area, approximately 700 hectares, has been declared a national heritage site. The dig site is open to the public for tours and education. Paleontologists come here from all over the world to discover more about earlier life forms. Well, over 200 different Animals have been discovered here, um, invertebrates and vertebrates, uh, the whole range. It's actually one of the richest fossil sites in the world um, because you've got your mixture of marine, terrestrial and freshwater animals. And they were, the, the site was discovered through phosphate mining way back in the 1930s. The fossil park was opened specifically to um, allow the public uh, access to a, a fossil site and, and also to allow us to continue with our research. So um, based on the research we've developed education and tourism programs and the, the education programs include uh, hands-on activities. The educational facilities include affording learners the hands-on opportunity to experience what paleontology is all about. In 2017, the park received funding from the National Lottery for the new Interpretive Centre and Museum. The museum is housed alongside a huge walk-in diorama. Very clever depictions of civetheas made out of driftwood are shown against the type of woodland vegetation of the era. This information was gleaned from fossilised pollens, leaves and wood. There are plaques explaining all aspects of the animals and the environment of five million years ago. A variety of different skulls and bones is on display.
An animated diorama shows the local creatures of the night, illuminating them in succession. Downstairs, there is a fascinating subterranean hall with models of creatures and activities below ground. Dung beetles burying dung balls, ants active in their colonies, moles, mole rats, worms, tree and plant roots, fungi, all there in great detail. It's all incredibly well done and very informative. So underpinning the education and tourism programs, of course, is the research. So we couldn't do tourism or, or education without the research. The amphitheatre has been planted with the types of vegetation and trees that would have grown back in the late Miocene and early Pliocene eras. And for the hungry visitor, there is the restaurant, which is also the home of the West Coast Chef School. Young chefs in the making produce delicious and beautiful food. For further fun and education, or simply for souvenirs, there is a shop which also sells locally produced jams, pickles and the like. This is a world-class site in terms of the scientific finds and a world-class visitor experience as well.